Hello everyone, I'm RecB5. And I am Sandman99. And we're back with Fallout 4 G9-13 playthrough. Yes, and uh, we have just finished the main quest line for uh, uh, the Fens Sheriff's Department, Diamond City Wins. Yep. And we went to Lily's wedding and all that, and so now we got to decide what we're going to do next. But what I did in the meantime is I came back and tinkered with my... Uh, factory here a little bit again nice to try and solve some of the problems and so as you can see there are still some things going round and round on the conveyor belts it's pretty funny actually uh when you see that ball there yeah rotating backward like that well i've seen you know things like rubber balls or rounded rocks or marbles or whatever behave very similarly on real live conveyor belts eh? yep yep so it's it's uh, pretty funny that they did that here. But anyway, what I did I have to get control back here again. What I did was I added a little bit to the plant at this end and I put in a sorter here that has I think just about every type of component in it, mm -hmm. like loose component. So basically the hopper here draws everything out. Hmm. You just <laughs> some yeah. things still fall off. Yeah, some things still fall off. It basically draws everything out of the workbench here. So I'm going to put that back in now. And uh, anything that has one of these components in it will then get directed into that elevator and then onto this conveyor, which will then drop into this big hopper here. Yep. Right? And anything that does not have one of these loose components in it gets passed straight through and into this elevator and into that hopper and onto this conveyor and onto that belt. And of course, we put up a little deflector here because <laughs> we noticed that uh, we had things like watermelons and bowling balls falling off the edge. Yep. So this little short wall piece here serves as a nice deflector plate. And you know what? In my... Uh, uh, sand and gravel days, we used to do things like this too. We'd build walls on the sides of conveyor frames to try and contain the stream of products, right? Oh, well, there you go. It worked on, out well. Especially on, <laughs> on things like 90 degree uh, transfer <laughs> points like this, right? Yep, yep. So anyway, now everything that is not uh, junk that contains some kind of loose um, junk component in it, with the exception of uh, concrete and, uh, you know, like, because uh, that doesn't really have any purpose anywhere else, Yep, is in here. And I built this handy uh, crafting station so that when I want to take stuff out of this bin and put it back into the main um, workbench... You can. I can. And I can uh, actually just turn this switch off, and then, of course, that will turn this line off, right? Yep like this portion, so then the stuff in the workbench will stay in the workbench. If I turn it back on, of course, then it's going to start drawing everything out of the workbench and through this whole process again. And then, of course, I've got the hopper here, which feeds another vacuum hopper. And what I've done is I put components into all of these component sorters, and I put up a little sign there that tells me what I can expect to find at each station. Okay. So things that have... Uh, cloth or plastic in them are here, right? Yep. And then, of course, further down the line, we have another vacuum hopper to draw out of this. And if I throw this switch, then the vacuum hopper will start to draw any items that are stored in this storage bin into this food processor, okay? And then that food processor, if it has the right kind of components in it to make certain types of processed food, will then make it and then put it into this storage bin. And all of these lines more or less work the same way. They have a vacuum hopper onto a conveyor storage, right? So yep. at this station, I'm looking at, uh, it has a few more components, oil, adhesive gears, springs, screws. So all of those things that have those elements or, or components in them are now in this storage bin. Of course, uh, you know, and they may or may not have anything to do with, um, you know, like the, the particular plant that I need. But I'm mostly I just wanted to sort the items out. But here we have asbestos, anything with asbestos or silver in it. Right? Yep, yep. Here. 
and here and again adhesives oil gear spring screws right so the sign says it helps me to find things because unfortunately there still will be a certain amount of manual transferring of uh, items from one uh, uh, manufacturing plant to another because some of them double up on components. well yeah for example if I need steel to make a certain heavy weapon item well I'm gonna put steel a piece of steel in this component sorter but what that does is it will take anything that has steel in it coming down the belt and put it into this bin yep which means that if I need steel in something a little bit further down like this armor forge well it doesn't matter even if I put steel a piece of steel into this component sorter well none of it is going to make it past the first one yeah right? and I haven't really been able to think of a way to uh, uh, bypass that or, or figure out a way to make that fully automated I'm, you know like it or not there's going to be a certain amount of manual transferring of items because uh, this thing in order to run it just the way it is already takes an absolutely ridiculous amount of power like you can see all of the uh, you know power stations that I've got the, the large generators yep basically I've got an entire field full of them right because I don't have the ability to build a nuclear reactor because I'm not sciencey enough and uh, anyway and then of course we have the uh, thing that collects components that are needed for most types of ammunition right including copper fertilizer I lead plastic and steel again right so hmm. that's an example there if I wanted something that needed steel and if I'm already filtering steel out over there somewhere I'd have to go over there and get it and then bring it over here and put it in this bin or even right into this ammunition plant right yep yep but anyway uh basically things are all kind of turned off here right now right because i turned this line off i have the ability to switch this on and off this vacuum hopper with this switch so how much each, ammo was in that uh well actually what happened was before i came back here and started tinkering with this some more um basically i left it on when i left yeah yeah we did and so of course everything that was passing around and round in the system eventually got filtered out and we had 45 ammunition queued up in the computer <laughs> right so eventually you know like stuff would continue to pass around through the whole system and back into the that big hopper over there and then back out into the system again and uh eventually like we filtered tonight. out all the items that had the required materials to make 45 That's ammunition true. and this thing just kept chugging away while i was gone so now in this bin i've got 2000 rounds of 45 ammunition oh god so i guess uh i can probably lean rather heavily on my automatic combat rifle Let's now <laughs> because i've got lots and lots of ammunition for it yeah <laughs> i just have to come back to starlight drive-in to get it so uh anyway that's more or less how that works and you can do this on a uh, smaller scale too and what it is is it's a little trick that allows you to put in uh, scavenging stations and have your scavengers actually continue to uh, collect items right mm -hmm. because of course if anybody has done any reading they would know that you can only have a maximum of 125 junk items in any settlement workbench so if you have 125 junk items or more in the workbench here at starlight drive-in well then your scavengers are actually not going to do anything right yeah so you can use this and use these component sorters and and all of this other equipment basically so that you can store all of your stuff either in this bin or in the various sorted out uh you know conveyor storage bins right nice and that way if you have people assigned to those uh scavenging stations well just by turning the system on and leaving it running finding anything good <laughs> more conveyor no, spillage right but uh anyway by leaving this system on when you We're leave the settlement then uh oh what's going on is that you i want to trade a few things okay yeah, no. You said you were in some real trouble. I just want to trade a few things. <laughs> okay. Well, Are we having a dialogue bug? I think we're having a dialogue bug, yeah. 
Just wanted to trade a few things. Sure. Okay, so anyway, we'll put that stuff back in here. And then, of course, now it'll start to feed this stuff out, right? Yep. And uh, anything that has the appropriate components are going to go up in here, and they're going to end up in this bin here. Eventually. And then they'll get drawn out into this here, and uh, see, there, there they are now passing through the system. Yep. Right? And eventually, uh, if they happen to have the right kinds of uh, things in them, then they'll get sorted out into these side lines with the uh, the, the uh, storage bins, right? Yep, yep. So, anyway, as I was saying, you could make a much simpler thing than this, which has basically uh, a sorter like this, and a storage bin there, and a storage bin here. And then what happens is you would sort all your junk items out into one storage bin and all your non-junk items out into the other bin. And then you could just put a crafting station nearby, you know, in between the two, so that you could easily transfer stuff from the bin into the craft, in back into the workbench system if you wanted to. Yeah. And just control the whole hopper system by a switch. Nice. So you could turn the switch off, put all the stuff in the bin, then run around and build things in your settlement and that kind of stuff. And then you could just, before you leave, you turn the switch on, it'll empty the thing out and sort it all into the two storage bins again. And then your scavengers will get back to work and continue to produce more junk items for you. And that damn truck fell off the conveyor again. <laughs> <laughs> it just doesn't agree with the yeah, conveyor. Let's just see what happens here. We can put this thing back in again and we'll see if we can follow it here. <laughs> okay, there it goes. Right? And it goes in there. You can hear the ding, right? And then it should come up here and end up in this hopper. Eventually. Oh, yep, there, it is. there it is. And then it'll go into the vacuum hopper, and then it should come out here. Now let's just follow it along and see what the hell the problem is. See, it fell out there again, right? <laughs> So it doesn't seem to want to go through here for some reason. But maybe what we'll do is we'll just hop up here. <laughs> Look at that. See, I can ride the conveyor belt. <laughs> Very bad thing to do, by the way. You should never do that in real life. You could die. Or, or at least, or at least, depending on what convey the conveyor is going into, you could at the very least be severely dismembered. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Bad things happen when you climb onto moving conveyor belts. Okay, I'm going to drop this on the ground, and I'm just going to pick it up. I'm going to drop it on this one, and see it. we'll see if we can get it to stay on here. Yeah, see, it goes through that one for some reason. Where did it go? I think it fell out again. Did it fall out again? It didn't come back out here anyway. Or did it get sorted out into this sideline? What's the sign say? Ballistic fiber. So there's no steel here. It's gone. It got consumed by the system. <laughs> well, unless it ended up here. Like, maybe it made it this far. And got sorted out into here. Is there a toy truck in here? Nope. 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 It got consumed by the system. Yeah. I guess, I don't know, certain things like toy trucks are buggy. I guess so. And it's broken, funny because that rubber ball is still going down the Yeah, I know that system. rubber ball is still spinning away on the conveyor system here. <laughs> you know, it works just fine, but the toy truck, man, it just goes into oblivion, right? Yeah. Anyway. And these stealth boys, too, are bad. There, we'll drop it back on here and see if we can follow it through. Okay. I wonder if it's just like their particular shape, like weird boxy I don't items. Know. I heard a chime there. See, and now it's going off into the storage bin over there. Yep. Right? But I don't know what happened to that truck. It looks like uh, this component sorter ate it. Oh, I know what happened to it. The, it had a screw in it, right? Oh, did it? Yeah, so it ended up in here. Nope. Oh, okay. <laughs> What happened to that truck? 
Where did it go? I don't think the truck is around anymore. The truck is gone. Yeah. It's gone. Why is the truck gone? I don't know. I guess the system ate it. Well, it looks like a, uh, like a tiny, because it looks like you've processed basically every type of item through here by now, just about, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, basically, there's nothing left in the workshop bench right now. It's empty. But it so. looks like there's, like, a couple of handful of items, namely trucks and broken stealth boys. Oh, and plasma pistols. <laughs> that don't like going through the yeah. system. Oh, I know what happened. I had this hopper open for a little while, and that's probably why that ended up over here, right? So if we throw the plasma pistol back in... Irradiated plasma pistol. Right, and there it comes out the thing. Standing on the handle, damn. And it should go right through there, and then into this elevator, and then into this hopper, right? And then since I've got power to this hopper, the little door's there, and now there it comes out the hopper, right? And then it drops down, and it bounces off of the <laughs> deflector plate and goes into the storage bin. <laughs> oh, man. There you go. See? Nothing like a well-oiled machine. Yeah. It makes me, you know, not quite miss the crusher quite so much. <laughs> oh, look, at there's t toy trucks all over the place here. What? How did they end up over here? Wow. Maybe they get flung out of the system. I don't know. They would have had to have been flung a long ways out of the system in order to make it way over here. You know, come to think of it, I, I thought I saw something fall down into the corner of my eye. Yeah. I maybe toy trucks just th there's something wrong with the physics in them, and they don't they don't yeah. work right. I don't know. Well, there's a new toy truck and a toy truck. I'm not sure what the difference is between the two, but one of them is kind of shiny, and the other one is not. Ding ding. So they both go into the system here. Right. Well, I'm sure glad you can hear the dinging because I can't hear it at all. Oh, well, I heard it. You're sitting next to the furnace, though, where it's kind of noisy, right? Well, I'm also like half deaf, basically. Uh. <laughs> I can't hear anything these days. Okay, well, we got one. Oh, there, see, it fell off. Yep. Okay. Oh, look at that one made it through. There, ding. See, and it should go out there. Ding. And then that one should go out there, too. There. Right? And she says she doesn't know what they're going to do. I just want to trade a few things. And you just want to trade a few things. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't seem to matter. That's probably one of those things you'd have to reload in order yeah. to fix. Maybe. I don't know. What do you want? What's your problem? Her problem oh. is you just want to trade a few things. Yeah. Oh, well, now I gotta eat something. <laughs> so we might as well have some three-year-old iguana on a stick mm. here. <laughs> yeah, it must be that old by now. Yeah. Huh. I used to be scared of super mutants, but we taught him a lesson this time. Okay. I think everything is probably just fine here. Yeah. Happiness is at 79, which is pretty good. Okay. So, anyway. Uh, we kind of wasted a little bit of time here in this episode playing around with the uh, uh, you know, item sorting plant, I guess, if you want to call it that. Yeah, but you did get, like, infinite ammunition out of it as a result. Yeah. Well, we just had a little, <laughs> little bit of fun there. I'm going to grab some of that while I'm here. Because you never know. All 2,000 rounds, right? Yeah, I'm going to grab all 2,000 rounds. Wow, look things. at that, eh? <laughs> it's going to be saying 999 in the corner for a while now. I hope you like 45s. <laughs> yeah, really, eh? I don't think I'm going to carry that much around. Well, okay, I will. Because I've got enough room, I guess I'll just use this gun for a while. <laughs> <laughs> But in the meantime, maybe I could uh, make a different kind of ammunition, right? Just look at Let's see, what else do I need here? Um, I'm gonna trade a little. Let's see here. Five point five six or three oh eight. Okay. 
Oh, those both sound like good good ammunition candidates. Yeah. So we'll go over and have a look at the computer here. And see what we need for that. Okay. Ammunition plant control. Uh, 308 rounds. Copper, lead, and fertilizer. Okay. It sounds good. Well, those things should all get uh, redirected to the weapon plant uh, right straight, right? Yep. Well, we'll have to just turn this switch on now. There we go, see? And it will start making... <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Right? It'll start emptying all of the uh, stuff in the con conveyor storage out of here, right? And then eventually you'll end up with a pile up on the belt. <laughs> well, not necessarily. But you see how it's taking copper, copper bars, because if you scrap an item like a telephone or something, like if you drop it on the ground and scrap it, yeah. you get the separate components, like the copper and the and circuitry and events. all that kind of stuff. Yep. And then, of course, when you put those back in the workbench, because the idea being here is that eventually, if I end up with a bunch of unused stuff in here right? Like magnifying glass and that kind of stuff. Well, I'll pull that stuff out and I'll just drop it. Like one of the reasons I made a nice smooth floor space like this is because I can drop items on here and then uh, I can go into the workbench mode and scrap them, right? Yep, yep. And then I can pick up the, the you know, like when I scrap them, well then I automatically pick up the components again, right? Okay, it looks like we've emptied out the conveyor storage. And this thing has stopped for now. But we've got 5308 rounds in there. Well, that's not bad. Yeah. So I think what I'll do is I'll just leave this line turned on for now. Right? So that anything that it sorts out of here that's suitable for making 308s uh, that gets introduced into the system, um, you know, will just automatically make those. I just right? want to trade a few things. Hey. <clears throat> we could really use oh, okay. Help. This is the one that wanted help. <laughs> I'd be glad to help. I can. Something nasty is living just around the corner from here. It's only a matter of time before there's some real trouble. What's really too bad is it'd be a nice spot for a new settlement. In fact, I know some folks. Is there a place nearby that I don't have a settlement set up at? Must be. There is still in one piece. Anyone who decides to move in later will be able to rebuild. No problem. I'll take care of him for you. I hope so. We didn't know what to do. Jamaica but, Plain? Wow, that's like on the other side of the map. It's just nearby. Yeah, it's just nearby on the other side of the map. Right? Because we're here at Starlight Drive-In, and uh, that's like way the hell down <laughs> here. It's right next door. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, okay. Well, I guess we can probably do that. Why not? Uh, but in the meantime... I wonder if that rubber ball will still be there when I come back the next time. In the meantime, though, what I was going to do is continuing on with the uh, Fens Sheriff's Department mod. Uh, we do have some side, like major side quests to follow. And uh, one of them is called Loud and Clear Part 2. And it says, read the note from Dr. McClintock. Okay, so we're going to leave clearing the way of, for Starlight Drive-In for now. And we're going to read the note from Dr. McClintock. If we can find it. Because I have got so much. Oh, here note we go. Note from Dr. McClintock Urgent. Okay, it says, G9-13, please come see me at my greenhouse. It is an urgent matter. Bring Lily with you too. Okay. So, I guess that's what we're going to do. Because, uh, you know, like, we've played through the main Fens Sheriff's Department quest line and finished it. But we still do have some major uh, side quests having to do with uh, whatever this is that we're going to go and do. And also Lily's uh, continuing vendetta against raiders. Yeah, right? you got to get that all sorted out. Yep, so we're, we're going to work on that for the next few episodes and see, you know, what all that stuff looks like. 
and how it all turns out. I think you left your Make a Plane quest active. I did, but that's because I did that because I don't want to forget about it. Ah, yeah. fair enough, fair enough. So, anyway, we'll uh, make a quick stop here just because I wanted to show a little bit of this off. This is another one of the Red Rocket uh, settlements. Yep. And it's become fairly developed now, right? I've built a fair amount in it. It has a relatively small footprint at ground level, but you can build on top of the buildings in here. Oh, okay. Right? Uh-oh. Red Rocket South Boston needs to be defended. So, oh, and I got a new guy here. Somebody who said he didn't, don't think I'd, we've met yet. Yeah, but where the hell was he? Was he talking to you from, like, ground know. level? Yeah. Like that other lady was talking to you through the machine. Yeah, like, these guys are guards. And she's a guard, right? So as you can see, you can build on top of these things. And what I did here, because there's a stairway coming up in the from Be the careful. unfenced area here, mm -hmm. is I just stuck a section of fence in here to keep <laughs> anything bad from coming up the stairs. And then this is my private quarters here. Maybe this guy was the I guy. I want to trade a few things. Sure thing. Is this the new guy? Yep. Yeah, he is. Okay. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to send him to... Oh, I can't send him to Starlight Drive-In. I guess Starlight Drive-In is full. Yeah, I don't know why he's hanging around in my, my room, but... Well, but he can talk to you through the wall, though. I guess so, yeah. <laughs> But anyway, and we also have a, uh, like a, a synth detector here. So when we switch that on, okay, zaps me a couple of times. <laughs> but basically what it'll do, okay, new guy is okay, it's not a synth. What it does is if there are any synths in the uh, settlement or in the immediate area, is it knocks them on their asses and then they sort of... Uh, have, you know, like a little bit of an electrical yes. aura or current or something around them and they, they uh, you know, like emit smoke and that kind of thing for a little while. Yep, yep. This might be the first season where we'll end up with a reserve. Thanks to but you. Anyway, yeah. Oh, look at that. He just gave me some 308s. Thank you. <laughs> so, anyhow, as you can see, you can build on top of uh, all of these areas, right? Yep. And up here, I usually what I'll do is if I'm building with boxcars, is I'll put machine gun turrets on top here. I'm starting to think we're finally safe from those damn raiders. Okay, and then of course, uh, you know, it's all connected to my building complex here as well, right? So, and then I haven't even built beds in here yet. But you can build quite a lot in this relatively small area. As long as you make use of the space. As long as you make use of the space, like the rooftops and that kind of thing. Yep. You know, like there's even, like I've got, you might have noticed I came up, up, up the stairs here to get there, but there's also a branch over here so that you can go up here too, Hi, right? So, as you can see, you know, like I've got a boxcar with some beds in it over there, and a bunch of laser turrets and machine gun turrets and all that kind of stuff, and it's uh, it's actually a pretty cool... It's one of my favorite settlements, actually. What the hell is Lily doing over there, standing up on top of the... Uh, if you turn to your right? Hey, What? Uh, yeah, further to your left? Oh, Lily is stand, <laughs> standing on top of the boxcar <laughs> over there, yeah. She's like a Brahmin. Yeah. Well, don't worry. She's fine. Actually, there's a set of stairs going up there. Oh, so okay. So you can make use of this space, too. Basically, this was sort of like a garage with a bunch of holes in it and stuff, so I lined it with concrete pieces. And then in here is our shop, like our, our uh, bar and general store and clinic, cooking area and all that kind of stuff. So it's pretty nice. I like this settlement. It's pretty cool. So anyway, we need to look at the computer now and see if we got a job that we can give that new guy. Okay. One guy unemployed. 
and we got no jobs available. I guess we could build a guard post someplace maybe and make him a guard. Just stuff it like right in the front door. <laughs> he's he's the uh, uh, Walmart greeter, the settlement greeter. Yeah, the settlement greeter. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Actually, we can probably... You're right, we'll just put it right there. Be like, welcome to uh, Red Rocket. Trespassers will be shot. Yeah, Red Rocket. <laughs> Red Rocket Lexington. And of course, it never hurts to have more guards, so... See, I don't tend to build a lot of scavenging stations because of that 125 junk limit. Yeah. Unless you've got a way to remove all that junk and store it somewhere, right? Like at Starlight Drive-In. At, like at Starlight Drive-In, where you can then maybe get people to harvest junk for you constantly, and it can you can kind of farm it, right? But here, I find that there's not really much point. So, I might as well, uh, you know, like, take a short nap here and stay the night, because uh, by the time I get to Barb's greenhouse, she's going to be closed. <laughs> That's a running gag, right? Yeah, yeah. sorry, I'm I know closed. you. I know you were. I, you, I really badly wanted to see you about something very important, but I'm closed. You're gonna have to come back in the morning. <laughs> so, if you want to repair this synth detector, right? Obviously, I did not find any synths. Like, I took a little tour around my settlement after setting that off, and I didn't find any. So, I can switch that off, and then I can go into the workbench here, and I can repair it. And it cost me some, uh, you know, components, which I don't have enough of, apparently. I don't have any copper. Okay. Yeah, you so, used all your copper making ammunition. Yeah, I guess I used all my copper making ammunition at Starlight Drive-In, eh? <laughs> oh, well. You might be on acid. Anyway, uh, you can repair it, and you can, you know, like, control it with a switch, right? Yep. And that's from another mod, like a mod, too, right? So I don't remember who the guy was that made it, but... Basically, if you uh, follow through the Covenant little side quest line, yep, and you get into the the um, uh, underground complex there, and uh, you know, kill off the the uh, leaders of that little faction, you then uh, you can find some documentation on this thing and instructions on how to build them. And then what happens is uh, also as part of that mod. In under apparel, people may have noticed that I have these things called synth destabilizers. So what happens is, if you turn one of that, those uh, synth detectors on, and it stuns a synth, so that he's basically sitting on the ground. Yep. What you can do is you can uh, basically force transfer and equip one of these uh, synth destabilizers on him while he's down, and it's basically like a ring. But what it does is it makes that synth get up off the ground and then start attacking people. So then all your, that's how you can kill them without any consequences to yourself. Because if you just suddenly, if this settler is a synth and I know that this settler is a synth, if I shoot her, well then all the other settlers are going to think that I murdered her and they're going to attack me, right? Yep, yep. But if I stun her with that synth detection uh, uh, equipment so that she's sitting on the ground and trailing smoke, and then I basically uh, put one of those destabilizer rings on her, then when she recovers and gets up, she'll be hostile to the settlement, and then even gun turrets and everything else will turn on her, right? Yep. Yes. Yeah. So it's one way, because I know lots and lots of people have always wondered how you can detect synths and all that kind of stuff, and there isn't, really isn't a way to do it, but the guy who made this mod basically figured out a way that you can detect synth settlers that are infiltrating your settlements, right? And destroy them. Yeah. That's actually a pretty old mod. It's been out for a long time now. It still works pretty good, too. Yeah, it still works. I've, I've managed to find a few synths and, uh, and weed them out. I think that might have happened at this settlement, and that's why I suddenly got a new guy uh, appearing here, because... Uh, he's there to replace the uh, old dead guy. Yeah, he's there to replace the old dead guy. Yeah, because the, uh, they ended up on the dead guy side of the line. 
yeah. And, uh, you know, because my, and here's, here's another one. I actually have two of them here. That one's switched on, so I must have used it recently, too. <laughs> right? You must have had quite a few problems with uh, since here. Well, what happens is, if you start to notice, like, one of the indicators that you can sort of get a hint as to whether or not there are synths in your settlement is if you start to have things like, I thought I actually had a bug for a while, like a power bug where you go to a settlement and all of a sudden half of your power is off, right? Mm -hmm. And if you disconnect a wire and then reconnect a wire, well then everything starts to work properly again. But eventually that happened enough times and when I got a synth detector and fired it up and discovered a synth or two, in my settlement, well then uh, that kind of made me realize that maybe that's an indicator that there might be a synth in your settlement sabotaging things, right? And of course uh, occasionally you, you can lot to learn if you um, on being a find a synth in your settlement because they will uh, you know, like um, if, if it happens to be an institute based settlement attack well then they'll join uh, in on the settlement attack, right? Like, they'll start attacking. Oh. All the robots. Yeah. Attacking my provision. It looks like your provisioner's fairly capable anyways. Like, I mean, not all these robots were killed when you were here. Yeah. Yeah, well, they're uh, reasonably... Like, that police uniform gives them about uh, around 70 or 80 total armor protection. Mm hmm And then I usually arm them with some kind of decent weapon, too, that does a, you know, reasonably good amount of damage. And, of course, these settlers just might have... Uh, you know, managed to account for some of this as well, right? Before they got killed. Because it looks like there's a group of settlers here that got killed as well. <clears throat> but anyway, we'll continue on. Boy, that Brahmin's really giving her. Yeah. <laughs> well, obviously it got uh, sort of left behind. And we'll just shortcut through uh, Cambridge Square here and we'll shoot that ghoul again. Look at that, a resilient laser musket. Huh. whoop de doo Take that gold watch hey, again. What you need? Hey, I don't need anything, Lily. Take that and that. Uh, you know you want that coffee pot. Yeah, I could, but I'm going to take that cooking oil because it's useful. And we'll take the noodle cup and the cram. Pick this lock for the XP. This area is sort of like Bedford Station, oh, too, right? Like, it'll they keep... Left it unlocked. Yeah, they did. Honest. <laughs> so anyway. Oh, look. Another feral ghoul there. So, ghouls respawn every so often, and so does all the loot in the area, too, right? Like, you can keep coming through and re-looting this area again and again. Oh, what's going on there, Lily? Oh, it looks like she found something to shoot at. Bobby pin. Yep. See, Lily's using a radium rifle by the looks of it. She must have picked that up somewhere along the way, because I didn't give that to her. She seems to pick up a variety of different weapons along the way. Yeah, I wonder if she uh, actually expends ammunition, or if she's like a settler where... Uh, where... Uh, you know, like she never runs out of ammunition for whatever gun it is that she... Hey. Okay. So I gave her a minigun. But she doesn't have any ammunition for it. 
oh, I know what I was going to do. I was going to put up the recipe for five millimeter. <laughs> That's now I remember. Okay, well, I guess next time missed opportunity. She can carry that thing around for a while. Eventually, I just wanted to see what Lily would do with a, with a minigun, right? Mm. But anyway, she's got 2845s there, right? So we'll sh see if she keeps shooting that gun. Maybe she doesn't actually use ammunition, you know, in much the same way that uh, settlers don't, right? Like, you can give a settler a minigun and one 5mm bullet and they'll be able to, like, spray and pray forever, right? Yep. <clears throat> <laughs> nothing new here which is just a teensy bit immersion breaking but you know ah it's fine that's why usually I try and give if I give a settler a weapon I try and give them enough ammunition to load the gun completely once because it just to my mind at least immersion wise it makes more sense to do that it's right? a magic uh gun clip i load it in and then i take it out of the gun and then i put the same clip back in the gun and it yeah. fires some more yeah <laughs> yeah it regenerates yep but anyway that was a uh, that's that's a lot of fun I can't remember, uh, I think some of the Elder Scrolls games had that too with arrows. Yeah. Yeah, where you could uh, keep picking up arrows forever that were shot by NPCs. But not only that, but I think <laughs> you could give uh, NPCs like a, a single arrow. Yeah, I think the way it works is that if, if you give them, say, a quiver full of dwarven arrows, well, they'll shoot those dwarven arrows until they're gone. But I think it's like iron arrows or something that, uh, like if they pull out their default hunting bow, like if they shoot all the arrows that you gave them, they'll pull out their default hunting bow. Yep. And then they'll shoot, you know, like, uh, magically conjured iron arrows out of their default hunting bow, right? And no matter how many times you take away that default hunting bow, they'll keep producing new ones. <laughs> yeah, although I think archery gameplay overhaul maybe did something to, to adjust that because what I found is that I find iron arrows laying around all over the place that I can't actually pick up. Oh, okay. It shows that it shows on the ground as being an iron arrow when I look at it, but when I go to pick it up, I can't. <laughs> so I think that archery gameplay overhaul must have uh, done something, right? Well, I guess mom's spaghetti is a good healing item. Well, there you go, man. Got to pick up some mom's spaghetti then. Yeah, regenerates all crippled limbs and gives you a buff to charisma. See, that's all professional athletes need, right? Yeah, mom's spaghetti. <laughs> Red Rocket South Boston. I guess we took too long getting to Red Rocket South Boston, but they successfully defended themselves anyway. Read that interview you gave. That thing you said at the end about one day at a time. So you you just gotta wonder what 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 exactly is in Mom's spaghetti, and you know you're looking at the recipe and it's calling for like morphine. <laughs> <laughs> the hell are you doing putting morphine in the spaghetti? Well, it's Mom's spaghetti. <laughs> okay, so as per our usual uh, precaution here. Gonna smoke a cigar before we go in. Make a hard save. <clears throat> yep. Where's the Oh, yeah, here she comes. It's also good to make a uh, permanent save once in a while, anyway. All these auto saves and quick saves and stuff, they all overwrite one another. So if you uh, do nothing but those for too long, then if something goes wrong, you could lose an entire um, play couple through. of play sessions. Well, or more, right? Yep, yep. Depending yeah, you on. lost an entire playthrough. Yeah, I had about a level thirty character, and I lost the entire playthrough because of that. So, got to be careful. Yep. Thank goodness for mods because. Uh, 
You know, like I, I honestly don't understand the reasoning behind not allowing a player to save in survival mode. Yeah, they should be allowed you know, to save. Like, like if you if you can produce a game that is perfectly free of glitches and bugs and it will play properly and save properly at the times when you need it to save, then fine. But you know what? If, if your uh, game is still somewhat vulnerable to that kind of thing, then uh, let your players save whenever they need to or want to. Yep. You know, I don't see why that would be a limit or a breaking of immersion or anything like that even. Like, I just don't understand the reasoning behind doing that. Especially in a single-player game. I disagree with that philosophy anyway, right? Okay, so here we go. We're gonna go and nice see to Barb. Nice stretch my legs again. I wasn't made to stay in one's... Hey, sis, can I get some oranges, please? They're for a friend. Sure. As <laughs> long as you don't go trying to compare them to apples. Huh? <laughs> Never mind. I'm doing fine, Lily. Thanks for asking. Of course you can have some fruit. Scurvy is a constant worry around here. Between the poor diets and the background ionizing radiation, it's a wonder more people don't have scurvy, rickets, or other developmental disorders. <laughs> you should think about a bone density test and a red blood cell count on a regular basis, given your usual exposure levels. Oh, I asked for some fruit, not a science lesson. You do this every time. <laughs> Sorry. Force of habit. Just grab them off the table under the steps there. You just in the mood for some oranges, I take it? Yeah. Uh, I was, uh, just, you know, craving some oranges. Anyway, thanks, Babs. Catch you later. Well, at least I know you'll be safe and good, neighbor. Please be careful out there, Lily. We just got you back. Take Lily to her informant and good neighbor. Okay. Um, do I talk to her? There you guys are. I've got an emergency. It's something the two of you can handle, and I need people I can trust to do it. Yeah, sis, we got your letter. What's up? Gotta be pretty important to get you riled up like this. Oh, Lily, it's awful. I gave some settlers some queen bees and taught them how to care for hives. I thought they could use the help and caps. But Padlock was just talking to DP and told him that some raiders had hit the settlement after they found out about it. What? They just wiped out the settlement. Where are they at? I'll kill every last one of those motherfuckers. Nobody fucks with us. It's worse than that, Lily. They leveled the settlement and kidnapped the settlers, forcing them to work the hives so the raiders can sell everything. Huh. I can't stand the thought of something I did causing all that pain. You need to go free them, please. Please. We're gonna do better than that. We're gonna wipe those fuckers out. Nobody in the Commonwealth is gonna fuck with a hive when we're done. Where the fuck are these dead raiders? I don't know exactly. DP didn't ask him. All I know is they're somewhere way up north of Concord. Padlock told him he was gonna finish trading in the infield and come back to the Slocums in right field for a bite. Maybe you can find him there. Don't you worry none. This ain't your fault, sis. We're gonna fix this once and for all. Send our own message that your hives are off limits. I knew that's what this would come down to. You can't reason with raiders. They only understand one thing. <laughs> Here, I bought this off Whitworth when I heard. Leave this there for me. I need this message to be loud and clear. A Whitworth special, huh? I like where your head's at, sis. I'll try to leave it in their leader's ass for you if he's still alive. Come on, let's go find Padlock before he takes off with his Brahmin for another two weeks. Be careful out there, you two. Okay. I need to go find Padlock and Wright Field and talk to him. Alright. Okay. Boy, you're getting quite the uh, stockpile of uh, side quests here. Yeah, I've got quite the stockpile of side okay. quests going on here. <clears throat> Okay, but I think we gotta go... Where is that? That's in, uh... In the coffee shop there, probably. Yeah, right? it'll be in the coffee shop. Play 
your cards right, you'll probably get shot in the head by someone not playing cards. Aces and eights, baby. Yep, through the access tunnel. And past the guard. Yep, past the guard. <laughs> Seems like in these close quarters, the Goss rifle's kind of wasted. Yeah, maybe he's just there for the intimidation factor. Yeah. He's retired, right? This is what retired... Uh, it's a <laughs> Fen Sheriff's uh, Deputy Greeter. There you go. Yeah. Oh, wow, Lee. There he is right there. Okay. Excuse me. Yeah? You need some? Really? Long time no see. I heard about all that shit the Institute put you through. First person to get away. Figures it'd be you. Hey, Padlock. Yeah, been almost a year, hasn't it? Mind if we don't talk, Institute? You don't want to get me started. Your wife and kids still doing okay? Last time I saw them a week ago, yeah. They're getting so big. Keep asking when they can head out on the road with me. So what's going on with you? You get yourself a new sidekick here? Oh, uh, yeah. I had a new one sign on. You know sidekicks. Gotta teach them the working end of a rifle, but eventually they start to keep up. I wish I had more time to talk. But Babs came to me. Said you were telling DP some raiders had flattened the settlement and stole their beehives? Oh, yeah, I saw them a couple weeks ago. Some raiders stopped me on the road. Usually my guards open fire on them, but they want to do business. Business? Raiders? the fuck kind of raiders want to do business? The kind of something to sell. Turns out they had honey, mead, even a couple of queens they claimed. Something didn't add up though, because the labels were scraped off all the bottles they were selling, and they couldn't answer any bee questions. What made you think they had hives and shit though? You know, they could have just been selling something they stole from somewhere. Well, you see, the next part of my route was up in a town called Fitchburg, and I knew they had some beehives they started with the docks help. And while it wasn't ever big to begin with, Fitchburg was burnt out pretty good. Seems some raiders hit it a few weeks ago. The survivors were just starting to rebuild. They told me the raiders had kidnapped the beekeepers and made off with the hives. So why'd you think these raiders were the ones who did it? Raiders are stealing shit all the time, that's how they operate. Well, uh... You'll know it was these guys when you see them. Trust me <laughs> on that one. <laughs> Bought a few bottles so they didn't kill us and steal our shit. You know how that goes with these idiots. That was in Sanctuary Hills, that ugly town way up north. When we were done, they went north. If you're looking to, you know, do what you guys do. Guess my reputation doesn't stretch that far north. Yeah, everyone's heard about the path you've been burning up the Raiders' collective ass cracks. I like it. See, I told you we were making a name for ourselves. Teamwork makes the dream work, little buddy. Thanks for the info, Padlock. Take care out there. Give me a couple years, there won't be any Raiders left. You be careful out there, Lily. I can't wait to hear about what you do to these guys. Hell, I can't wait until the Raiders hear about what you did. Come on, <laughs> let's go find us some shitheads and end their gang. We're gonna need a lot of fire to take out those hives, so load out for it. I never liked lugging around those giant flamers, so I bought a flame of pistol off Whitworth a while ago. Let's grab it from my room on the way out. Okay. Well, all right then. So go find the Honey Raider gang. Don't forget something to set the beehives on fire. Yo, I guess it's not really going to be uh, too hard for you to uh, load yourself out, considering you have two thousand rounds. Yeah, I know, but I think that it said something. More blight. I think it said something about that I'm supposed to have something I can set beehives on fire with, or something. Flamer yeah, pistol, don't, yeah. Don't, don't forget something to set the beehives on fire. Okay. We might have to stop at Starlight Driving on the way there anyway. Maybe I'll build myself a flamer. Because <laughs> <laughs> I do have uh, the, the weapons factory to do it, right? Yep. Um, which way are we going here? We've got to go this way. <laughs> she still doesn't like being around the manufacturing. Nope. 
<coughs> okay. Lily's room. Alrighty. Guess we need to go in here. And she's got some kind of fancy gun on the wall. A flamer. Is she supposed to take it or do I take it? I'll take it. Completed. Get the unique flamer pistol from Lily's room. This is your only chance. Okay. And now so, you just need flamer fuel. Yeah, what does this thing look like and what kind of ammunition does it take? It takes fuel. It's actually pretty lightweight for a flamer. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. So does it take like standard flamer fuel then? Is that what it takes? I would assume so. Hmm. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we'll have to close the door again. Yeah. Now. <laughs> see, now you see why NPCs get stuck on doors. Yeah. Are we there yet? Because I get stuck on the doors too. So maybe that's what I had to grab, right? I don't need to worry about that, except if I can find maybe some more flamer ammunition, and we'll find out if uh, that is in fact what this thing uses. Or if it's some kind of unique ammunition. After we have a drink of water. I never really had a close look at that thing. I wonder what kind of range it has. Don't know. I have to have a look at it here. Uh, flamer. Range 47. Okay. I wonder if you can modify this thing on the workbench or if it is just what it is. Well, you could always give it a try and play with it. trouble there's gonna be trouble Got actually should have a look at the map here and see where we're going up here wow. way okay, up there. way up there okay so this is going to be like a new encounter area on the other side of sanctuary hills so that ought to be entertaining too We'll just make a quick stop here in the uh, marketplace and have a look at this thing on a workbench and see what it looks like. Hey, ever thought about crafting a time machine to go Standard back receiver, napalm Yo! fuel, pressurized receiver. Wow, okay. Standard receiver. Efficient receiver. High ammo capacity. Oh, okay. Need something? All right, that sounds kind of interesting. Let's see what else it does. Standard nozzle, compression nozzle, vaporizer nozzle. Okay. Standard gripper or rubber grip. Standard sights or a reflex sight. Okay, so it looks like it's a pistol-sized flamer. Yep. Okay. Hey, Arturo, you got any flamer fuel for sale? Sure. Let's take a look. Feel free to test the grips. Ammo. Flamer fuel. Okay, he's got a whole bunch. Let's buy it. <laughs> all the flamer fuel. Yep, I'm gonna buy all the flamer fuel. Thanks, buddy. Let's see what this thing looks like now. It's just a, you know, a home defense weapon. Yep, it takes standard flamer fuel, so... We'll do a quick save here, just in case this Arturo thing isn't compatible with my, way. uh... Uh, holstered weapon mod that I'm using or whatever, and then we'll just see what it looks like. And then bought the store from yep. that. See that? It is, too. Out of the city. You're still on good wow. terms. Okay. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you can actually carry it around. Yeah, it's not... you can actually carry it around because it doesn't weigh like 35 arbitrary weight units. 
But anyway, I think this is probably a good place to call it an episode because we got a long trip up there and uh, it looks like probably a fairly involved process to uh, eliminate raiders and rescue settlers for the next episode. Alrighty. So we'll call it an episode here until next time. I am Sandman99. And I'm Rugby5. Have a good one.